All right. <clears throat> Saturday, August 19th, later. Dad and Eric were gone all day. Our house never did burst into flames, but the thermometer on the patio hanging there in the direct sun did climb to over 100 degrees. A vicious thunderstorm hit in the late afternoon and knocked out our power for about 10 seconds. That was just long enough to make mom and me have to go around the entire house, resetting all of the alarm clocks, VCRs, computers, and stereos. After supper, I opened the garage door and walked my bike out toward the street. The air was hot and damp, but there was no smell of smoke. The wind was blowing west now toward the Gulf of Mexico. You can actually see the wind here. It whips around full of white construction sand, the sand that covers the streets and the unsold lots. The same white sugar sand that whipped through our development in Houston and the one before that in Huntsville. I turned left and pedaled against the sand toward the front of the development. Our street is about half filled with houses now. The development has grown from the west side to the east side and we're on the last street before the east wall. Every empty lot on our street has a sold sign on it though, so Lake Windsor Downs will soon be complete. I stopped at the model homes area, four houses surrounded by the same white picket fence, and pulled off my glasses to clean them. Lake Windsor Downs offers four choices to home buyers, each named after a British royal family, the Lancaster, the York, the Stuart, and the Tudor. Mom absolutely loves that. I'm sure that's why we live here instead of in the estates at East Hampton or the manors of Canterbury or the villas of Versailles. Mom will soon be describing people like this. They're the two-story Lancaster with the teal trim, or they're the white Tudor with the red tile roof. I replaced my glasses and started off again, riding parallel to that high gray wall. I stopped for a few minutes to watch two guys unloading thick squares of muddy sod from a flatbed truck. They plopped the squares down over the white sugar sand like pieces of a jigsaw puzzle. When they pulled away, a new white steward had a new green lawn around it. I pedaled up to the iron gates. They opened into a two-lane entranceway with a cement island in the middle. There's a fancy little guardhouse on the island, like something the kings and queens in history would have built to keep out the serfs or the vandals or whoever. It isn't keeping anybody out now. It's empty inside, but I could see a dirty ashtray and a wastebasket full of soda cans. Just inside the entranceway is a big pond, Lake Windsor, I suppose. I started around it on my bike. It's a perfectly round blue lake with a border of grass between the water and the road. I thought I heard a splash in the water, but I couldn't see anything moving. I rode completely around the lake in one minute and then headed toward home. As soon as I turned onto our street, I saw a black Jeep Cherokee parked in our driveway. A heavyset man in shorts was talking to mom. She was pointing at the top of our house and smiling. When I pulled up next to them, she was saying, so naturally I thought I'd see flames shooting out of the roof. The heavy set man turned toward me, nodding his head in sympathy. Yeah, when that muck fire kicks up, it can be a real stinkeroo. Hello, young man. Hello, sir. Paul, mom said, this is Mr. Costello. He's the president of the Homeowners Association. This is my son, Paul. I said, pleased to meet you. Mom added, he lives in the brown and beige Tudor on the west side. I shook Mr. Costello's outstretched hand and said, I was just up at the lake just now. Is that right, he smiled. Did you see any of the koi? The what? The fish, koi, Japanese carp. They look like giant goldfish. No, no, I thought I heard something, but I didn't see any fish. You get up there early in the morning and check out those koi. They're really something to see. We had them flown in from Atlanta, stocked the lake full of them. Mom asked the lake, is that Lake Windsor? Mr. Costello laughed. I guess it is now. It's not an official lake, it's man-made. Any new development like this has to have a retention pond for storm runoff. We decided to make the lake a centerpiece, a showpiece for our community. We stocked it with the koi and added plenty of green space around it for strolling or even picnicking. He reached over and squeezed my elbow. No fish in though, okay? Those koi are high-priced fish. Just then, Dad and Eric turned the corner and pulled into the driveway. As usual, when Eric appears, the attention switched from me to him. Dad and Mom started to yell, tell, started to tell Mr. Costello about what a great football player Eric is. But Mr. Costello was ready for them. He has a football playing son of his own, and he hopped into his Jeep Cherokee to go get him. They all wound up in the great room near the fireplace. 
I sat on a stool near the kitchen. Mr. Costello's son is named Mike. Mike and his father talked about the football program at Lake Windsor High with a great deal of pride. Mr. Costello pointed out, we've only had the program for 10 years and we're already surpassed the program at Tangerine High. No big school football players are coming out of Tangerine High anymore. The Lake Windsor Seagulls are now the dominant team in three counties. They're rewriting all the county record books. Dad said, what position do you play, Mike? Mike Costello spoke very well, like one of those football guys who make United Way commercials. Coach Warner and Dad and I made a decision last year. Coach had enough linemen, but he had no backup at quarterback. He's been working with me, and now I'm number two quarterback on the depth chart. Mike's father turned to Mom and explained, that means he's the backup to Antoine Thomas. But no one in my family needs to be told what number two on the depth chart means. If mom had chosen to, she could have explained to Mr. Costello what it really means. As backup quarterback, his son, Mike, would be handling the snaps and holding the ball for the place kicker. In this case, Eric Fisher, a place kicker who can hit with deadly accuracy from 50 yards. If mom had chosen to, she could have explained to him that Mike Costello's backside would be featured in the local paper as he held the ball for his new place kicking sensation, but she didn't. Mike was very friendly. He told Eric that he had heard about him already from the coach and that he was looking forward to working with him. Eric smiled and said, so Coach Warner told you that you'll be my holder? Mike answered, coach wants me there as holder so he can have the option. Either we can kick the ball or we can fake the kick and have me roll out and run our pass. Eric was still smiling, but he said, coach Warner knows what I can do. He can send anybody out there to pretend to kick a field goal. When I go out there, it'll be for real. Mike shrugged and said, that'll be the coach's call, won't it? Eric locked eyes with him for a second, then backed off. Yes, of course it will. I thought to myself, way to go, Mike. But I had to admit, Eric was right. I've heard Coach Warner talk to Dad enough to know he's counting on Eric to be an impact player, a star. I guess part of that stardom will come at Mike's expense. I can see Mike Costello's future. I can see the Tangerine Times photos of the sensational senior place kicker, Eric Fisher and his anonymous holder. Dad has the clippings from Houston of the sensational junior place kicker, Eric Fisher and his anonymous holder, a kid whose name totally escapes me now. There will be no football glory in Mike Costello's future, but does Mike or his father really care? They certainly don't care the way Dad and Eric do. Dad told him that he graduated from Ohio State, but he added that he always regretted not being big enough to play football there. Mike's dad told us that he graduated from FSU and from FSU's School of Law. He didn't add that he regretted anything. Both, both Costello seemed to be impressed by Eric. They both asked about his high school exploits back in Houston. They both admired the gold varsity ring on his hand. Dad boasted that Eric was the only sophomore in his high school ever to receive one. Eric was as phony as he needed to be. He asked some questions about Lake Windsor High student government and about its National Honor Society. He asked about early acceptance programs at different universities in Florida. Mike told us that he had already been accepted into FSU School of Engineering, so I don't think he's too worried about his future in football or in anything else. Actually, he seems like a pretty decent guy for a football player, but who knows, he's bound to change in one way or another, once he gets caught up in the Eric Fisher football dream.